Hello, I'm Dr. Ayub. Today I'm here to discuss about conduct disorder. Conduct disorder is a disorder of behavior and children. If we see the problem in conduct disorder, this is present with aggressive behavior, disobedience, fighting, bullying, cruelty to animals, cruelty to other people, fire sitting, stealing, repeated lying, and truancy. If we see the problems, these can be grouped into physical aggression, destruction to properties, violation of age-appropriate norms, and risky behavior, which include early sexual behavior, involvement to gangs, and substance use. As we mentioned that the conduct disorder is a disorder of behavior, it's very important to differentiate it from normal aggressive outburst. So the occasional temper tantrum or outburst of aggression is normal in young children. But in conduct disorder, the aggressive behavior is different in terms of frequency, severity, and duration, which is repetitive, persistent, and prolonged, lasting for at least six months. If we see the diagnostic criteria according to the ICD-10, the symptom must be present at least for six months. The age of onset is not mentioned in ICD and presence of one symptom is enough for the diagnosis of conduct disorder if it is present for six months. According to the DSM-5, the symptom must begin before the age of 13. And according to DSM-5, the conduct disorder is subdivided into two types. Childhood onset, which is start before the age of 10, and adolescent onset, which is start after the age of 10. As we mentioned that it's very important before diagnosing conduct disorder to rule out normal temper tantrum, adolescence, rebelliousness, oppositional dependent disorder, other psychiatric issues like mood disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, schizophrenia, ADHD. The conduct disorder is present one to 10 per percent in general population, the male to female ratio is four to one. So it's four times more common in male. And a study, which was a uh, high of white study, showed that the conduct disorder was most common disorder in children of age group from 10 to 11 years. If we see the risk factor of conduct disorder, the risk are, this can be divided into individual risk and family or environmental risks. The individual level risk include genetic factors, which include the monoamine oxidase gene application, shared irritability between the conduct disorder, oppositional dependent disorder, ADHD, and dissocial behavior. The other individual factor include complication during pregnancy or at the time of birth, any brain damage and epilepsy, typical temperament, low IQ, poor language, low school achievement are also individual level influences which predispose a person for the development of conduct disorder. If we see the family or environmental level influences, this include poor child rearing practice, poor attachment like unstable, insecure or rejecting bonding with parents. Families from deprived areas are also predisposed for conduct disorder, broken homes, poor family relationship, adverse social environment, adverse neighborhood and school, child maltreatment, including abuse, 
violence punishment and corporal punishment are also risk factors for conduct disorder the fear influences residential care also increase the risk of conduct disorder but this is important to note that the individual and the family or environmental risk factors and trick to each other to develop conduct disorder. These are the some studies which show the risk factor which we already described. If we see the management of conduct disorder, this is start with a complete history to record the core problem to check for the causal risk and protective factors, to assist for comorbidity, making a diagnosis and establishing a management plan according to biopsychosocial model. The treatment is uh, biopsychosocial. The biological treatment, there's no specific drug to treat conduct disorder, but there are certain drugs available to deal with behavioral issues and comorbid conditions. And psychosocial treatment, which is the mainstay of treatment, among which the parent training program is first line treatment. Other psychosocial intervention include behavioral program or functional behavioral analysis, which involves uh, advice of the parent to pay attention on triggering factor of a behavior that is the antecedent recording of the behavior and the consequences of a behavior this is followed by positive reinforcement for desired behavior and negative reinforcement for undesirable behavior the behavioral program is both diagnostic as well as therapeutic in conduct disorder the parent training program as we mentioned this is the ministry of treatment and conduct disorder involves teaching of the parents about uh, parenting skills and setting rules for their child the other psychosocial treatment include anger management as these child have issues with anger remedial teaching for learning disability, family therapy, as these problems could be part of family malfunctioning, especially the multi-systemic family therapy has proven social services to support the family and other siblings, residential placement occasionally needed, referral to youth club, youth pending teams is also useful. What if in a long run, to this child, according to the Robin study, 40% adolescents show antisocial traits when they are young, including the violent pending, heavy drug use, teenage pregnancies, and they can leave school without qualification. Other studies show that 50% people with conduct disorder in their 20s develop antisocial personality disorder. If we see the prognostic vector and conduct disorder, this can be divided into three levels, individual level, family level, or environmental level. The individual picture include early onset, that is before the age of eight, so severe, frequent, and multiple dissocial behavior, comorbid ADHD and low IQ pervasiveness of the symptom. These are individual level poor prognostic factor. The family level poor prognostic factor include parental criminality, alcoholism, low income, harsh parenting. The environmental poor prognostic factor include poor environment and inadequate schooling. <laughs> 